So I don't know if it's because of nostalgia or because I went in with low expectations or because there were more 30 year olds who grew up watching Power Rangers than there were children in the theater that I went to, but I had a really good time with this movie. So this is a cinematic reboot of the old Mighty Morphin Power Rangers show, which I watched all the time when I was a kid. It was, it was campy as hell and awesome. And going into it, I didn't think it was going to be that good because these reboots almost never are. But some very clever writing and some recreation of some classic characters really did a lot to make the movie stand out. Now, I'm by no means an expert on the Power Rangers mythos, you're going to have to go to Linkar for that, but I thought this was a very solid foundation for a whole new series of movies. But anyway, so what was it about? Well, these five teenagers find these mysterious coins in a, in a dig site one day, and it all gives them superpowers. So they go exploring around the area, and they eventually discover an alien spaceship, which houses Zordon, played by Brian Cranston, awesomely, and Alpha 5, the the robot who was not nearly as annoying as he could have been. And by coincidence, as they discover their new powers, Rita Repulsa, the classic villain from the, from the TV show, also comes back, and they have to prepare for her assault on the planet's Zeo Crystal. Her getting the Zeo Crystal will ultimately destroy all life on the planet. So the movie's about these five teenagers from different walks of life coming together as a team in order to defeat this incredible evil. Decent plot for a storyline, and decently executed, I think. And I'm sure this is unintentional, but the movie came out on March 24th, and The Breakfast Club was set on March 24th, 1986. It actually kind of fits really well. Anyway, the writing in this movie was actually really on point. Uh, the jokes, almost all of the jokes landed for me. The characters were really fleshed out and um, not expanded on from the, from the show, but it's just the first movie. Give them time. And... I felt really drawn in into the action scenes and these characters' lives and, and how they were going about everything. We get to see the backgrounds of the team, who they are, where they're coming from, why they are the way they are, what it takes for them to all unify. And even Zordon gets a little bit of a background. Um, I don't know how correct it is compared to the old show, but <laughs> I thought it was really badass. I won't spoil it just because of how goddamn cool it is, but oh man, that... That opening scene with him really sets the mood for the rest of the movie. And oh my god, you want nostalgia. There were moments where the entire audience just burst out into applause, like when they were playing the original Go Go Power Rangers theme song. I, none of us weren't clapping. And the special effects and the fight choreography, everything looked really good. I'm, I'm actually thinking about going back and watching it again, and I almost never see movies in theaters twice. Now, there have been some changes from the original, of course. Jason, for example, is still the brave leader, but in this movie, he's more of a troublemaker. And, of course, uh, Rita is the, the Green Ranger, the uh, evil Sixth Ranger, who got corrupted due to uh, a want for power, desiring for the, the Zeo Crystals, and that's, that's its own little thing. Going into it, I was a little apprehensive. I wasn't sure how well they were going to pull that off, because that's not how she was in the show. This sounds like they're just trying to change the formula up a little bit to give something the audience wouldn't expect until a friend of mine pointed out that would actually be a really good explanation for why she has the green power coin. I mean, there you go. Really solid explanation for when they eventually bring in the Green Ranger. This was actually a really good adaptation from what the show was to what it could have been. I mean, the old show was great, don't get me wrong, but the, the it was campy, the special effects were... Uh, well, they didn't age well. A lot of it was all taken from Super Sentai footage from Japan, so you can, only, you can only do so much with that. But this, I think, could really turn into a really good series of movies. Now, that's not to say the movie is perfect. There are actually a few missing plot threads and a few plot holes. For example, and this is really minor, so don't worry about it being a spoiler or anything, but at one point the kids are all packed in a van and uh, they're, they're racing to get across some train tracks before the train uh, crosses. They don't make it, and train plows right into them. And then they all wake up in bed, and Kimberly at one point even asks, how did we get from the van to beds? We're perfectly fine, what's going on? And we never get an answer for that. That one kind of bothered me. There are a few other points, but I won't get into them because of spoilers, but uh, if you're paying attention, you'll pick up on them. Again, those are minor points, and they didn't really detract from the overall 
degree of fun I was having. This was way better than I thought it was gonna be. I thought I was gonna get like this level of quality. I got this level of quality. So definitely go watch this movie because I wanna see them turn this into a whole series of movies. If the writing and the characters and the jokes stay at this level, this will be something we'll be watching for years and it's awesome. And by the way, make sure you stick around when the movie's over because there is a really awesome mid-credits scene. Whole audience jumped up when they saw this one. <laughs>